So let's look at how we can connect the activity and the regular solution model. the activity and the regular solution model. So remember we said that the activity gave us a way to understand the behavior of a component in solution and whether or not the solution acted like there was more or less of that component in there and that that was related to the bond energy. right? We also saw that the regular solution model tells us something about the bond energy through the enthalpy of mixing. So we start out with this expression for activity, and then we can also write the expression for the change in chemical potential then as RT and then LN of this activity term. All right, this is equal this delta mu i, we can also write this as delta partial molar Gibbs free energy of i. And if we wanted to, we could expand this to be RT ln of gamma i plus RT ln of xi. Right? So this second term here, this is basically the contribution from the ideal solution. And this first term here quantifies the deviation from the ideal solution. We can compare this then to our definition of the excess properties, right? Where we could define this as the excess plus the contribution from the ideal solution, right? So if we compare basically this expression for delta GI, right, to this one, we see this is the ideal solution part and this is the excess part, right? So we're going to set this excess term equal to this term here and then see how we get a relationship between the enthalpy of mixing and the activity code. Okay, so we have then that delta G, the partial molar G, excess, this is equal to RT ln of gamma I, and for the regular solution then, that's equal to this quantity. So this is the change in the partial molar enthalpy for component I. That's the excess in the regular solution model. We can just rearrange this, right? So let's divide both sides by RT. Okay, divide by RT, divide this by RT, and then take the uh, exponent of both sides, and we end up then with gamma i is equal to exponent of delta h bar i over rt. Okay, great, except that's not terribly useful because we really have no idea what this is, and we want to compare gamma to delta h of mixing. Now, luckily, we can come up with an expression for this from delta H of mixing because we know how to connect partial molar properties to the total properties of the system, right? So let's revisit that. So if we had a binary system, we had an expression which looked like this. Right? And we know that delta H of mixing is equal to alpha XA XB. Right? And just again that we have this expression 
if we're dealing with this as an AB alloy. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to plug this in right here. Okay, and we are going to take the derivative of delta H mix with respect to XB, right, which is relatively straightforward. And we're going to plug this in over here, and that's going to let us end up then with a relationship that includes only delta H mix and gamma B. Do that. So delta H mix is alpha XAXB, and this is really XA, so this is 1 minus XB times XB. So this is equal to alpha XB minus XB squared. We can do the derivative of that with respect to XB, and that gives alpha 1 minus 2XB. And so we can plug those things in on the right side of that equation to get alpha XA XB plus XA times alpha so now if we factor out the alpha times XA terms okay we end up with XB plus 1 minus 2XB which is really just 1 minus XB, or alpha XA squared. So what we have here now is that we found that this is equal to alpha XA squared, and we had before an expression which said that gamma B equals exponent delta H B over RT. Okay, so we are going to take this and we're going to plug it in right over here. And we are going to finally then, let's keep this around end up with an expression for gamma B which looks like this. Now the only thing to be careful with here is that this is an expression for gamma B but we have XA in here and if we went through and did this we'd find an analogous expression for gamma A which is alpha XB squared over RT. So we end up now with a relationship between alpha and gamma. So alpha is what gives us our activity, uh, sorry, delta H mixing. Right? And gamma is what gives us our activity. So we have this very direct relationship now between the activity via the activity coefficient and the enthalpy of mixing via this adjustable parameter alpha. So if alpha is positive, delta H mixing is greater than zero. This term is positive and gamma is greater than one. In contrast, if alpha is negative, delta H mixing is negative, this term here is all negative, and gamma is less than 1. So this is how we can connect the idea of activity and enthalpy of mixing, and in class we will take a closer look at some examples of this.